Welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast that's usually for SQL Server developers and database administrators. I'm Kendra Little from SQLWorkbooks.com. Now, I think at the end of last week's podcast, I may have promised a technical topic this week, but I got a great question that isn't technical from a listener, and I just wanted to talk about it this week. It's a great time for me to talk about it. This week, I'm talking about slowing down your motor mouth, presentation tips for fast talkers. So the question that came up from a listener in conversation had to do with when I'm giving a presentation, I've gotten feedback that I'm going too fast. And what are tips that can help me successfully slow down without making it too slow or making it weird for the audience? And this is a question that I know a lot about because I myself have gotten that feedback. But the cool thing is, I just got my feedback from the SQL Pass Summit that was held in Seattle this year. And on my feedback, there was one thing that wasn't there. No one at all mentioned that I went too fast. No one said I went too slow either. People actually said they liked the pacing. And for me, this was really huge because three years ago, four years ago, I was getting comments that said I spoke too quickly. Now, I did think about not necessarily recording this topic and maybe just writing a blog post on it, because obviously um, I may speak too fast. (laughs) Recording a vocal podcast about pacing is a risky business, but I thought about it and I realized, you know, uh, no matter how I do, I'm going to do way better than I would have done four years ago. This is about progress, not necessarily perfection. And I definitely have tips that can really help you make progress on slowing down and enjoying it while you do it. I know from experience that when you get this feedback about speaking too quickly, it you understand the concept of it, but it's hard to think about actually executing it because if you just try to talk slowly, <laughs> it gets kind of weird. And you sort of get this monotone, you know, like like you're talking to an inanimate object, like actually trying to just slow down and like focusing on that slow thing. It just, it's it's hard to do it in a way that's graceful. And it's kind of missing the point. Like when we say you're talking too fast, the solution often isn't just about slowing down like the space between individual words. I think that it was Paul Randall who really helped me think about this. I I think it was a blog post I read of his where he mentioned that when he is doing pacing in his talks, he thinks about people who don't speak the language he's speaking as their primary language. They're fluent, but it's not their primary language. And that helped me think about it in a different way. Now, not great with languages, (laughs) but I do know that You know, when you're in a language that's not your own, it isn't necessarily the speed between the words that's that important. Often pauses at the end of a sentence or at the end of a concept give you time to kind of help put the words in order in your head and kind of catch up and get the concept to come together. So pacing is about not only the meter of the individual words, but then the breaks and the rests that you give people. And it isn't only people who aren't, you know, don't share a primary language with you that the pauses help with. Even if I'm speaking in English and my listener's primary language is English, if I can give pauses at the right points, that helps them have time to reflect, have time to assimilate different concepts, figure out how they're experiences relate to those concepts. It helps them connect with me. It's not just the power of the words. The pauses between the words are really, really helpful for your listeners as well. There was actually a great person at Speaker Idol who talked about these silences and and his talk was about allowing white space, both 
on a screen, on a dashboard, perhaps a technical dashboard, but also uh, he gave ver- audible slash verbal examples of allowing white space in your words as well to help your listeners. So what, when I'm speaking, what are practical ways that I can actually remember to do this and that I can help executing on this? Because just understanding the concept of, oh, you need to try to allow pauses is one thing, but but how do I, how do I integrate it? Well, one thing that's really helped me is just little notes, little sticky notes. And I wouldn't, I have multiple tips. I wouldn't try all of them at once. I would get a sticky note and just focus on one of them for your next talk. And what I do is I put the sticky note, I always use a laptop when I present and the audience can't see the screen of the laptop, right? They see the back of my laptop. So I just put the sticky note sort of at the top of the laptop where I can see it. And the sticky note is the reminder of the thing I wanna work at because I'm gonna glance at that laptop screen as I go. The first thing that I started working on with presenting when I was trying to slow down was controlling my breath. At first, when you're speaking in your very first speech, just remembering to breathe means you've succeeded. (laughs) Just, you know, the first time you're getting, I I wouldn't worry about too much of this stuff when you're really like on your first talk because you really just help yourself get through it and then celebrate completion. But when you start fine tuning it, taking deep breaths and breathing deeply and comfortably and pausing to take a deep breath can really give you that moment between sentences. Use that moment to prepare for what you're going to say next. You know, at first when you're in front of people, it's really hard to think. As you just practice that breathing, you start figuring out, oh, I do have time to actually consciously think about what I'm going to say instead of just auto speaking as I move through it. So my first sticky note that I ever used just said breathe on it. And by breathe, I really mean take a deep breath, you know, inhale, exhale. The second thing is take some time to drink water. Once you're really comfortable with breathing and you really want to work on your pacing, it is perfectly fine to stop your talk and pick up a bottle of water or a cup of water and take a sip. It gives your audience that moment while you're doing it. It gives you a break and water is actually really helpful. Speaking, especially like half an hour or hour talks, you get kind of dehydrated at the end of it. So drinking water before the talk And then taking time in the talk to drink water is often helpful and it naturally kind of gets you used to giving the audience a moment. Doesn't always necessarily work on audio podcasts. (laughs) I'm not necessarily saying that. But when you're on a stage and if you're speaking at a conference or a, a more casual event, stopping to take a drink of water can really, really help and I find it just makes me feel more relaxed, more at home, and the water is literally quite refreshing. Sometimes I do tea instead. I try not to bring up too many caffeinated beverages because this will eventually backfire with me on the speed. I sometimes like to have, especially in like an hour long talk or more, a water and a tea and I'll alternate between them. And that actually gives me a sense of comfort, relaxation. I like herbal tea that kind of soothes my throat. If you just go with coffee and your goal is to, you know, have a relaxed, enjoyable pace, you may find that the caffeine kind of pushes you in the wrong direction. But I think if it is something that just makes you feel comfortable you could switch it off with the water and and not take in too much. But I think that can absolutely, a warm beverage can really help you as well. Another thing that I have started really challenging myself to do is to pause and make eye contact with different people in the audience. And if you have kind of a wide room or a deep room, actually looking around, meeting different people's eyes, seeing if there's people I recognize. And if there is, 
someone I recognize, sometimes even waving to them. This, the timing of this is important, though. You know, in a really short talk, there might not be uh, good spacing for this. But if you're speaking for half an hour or an hour, often there's a time in your talk when you've kind of just come through the completion of a concept or a section. You don't want it to be a time when you're, you don't want a big pause when you're doing something like switching between maybe a demo or another screen, or you're, you don't want a pause that makes it seem like oh, oh, I have nothing to say, right? So to make this pause feel more natural for the audience, this eye contact thing really helps. Looking around and making eye contact and being friendly and open at the end of a concept gives the audience an opening where they can not only think about what you've discussed, but they can raise their hand and ask questions without feeling like they're interrupting for you. So you want to make this, you know, it's it's an art. You have to practice and get used to it. Not too long, not too short. This is one of those things that when I when I felt comfortable with the breathing, when I felt comfortable drinking water on stage, maybe a little bit of tea, I started saying, okay, well, let's see. I've got an hour long talk. I'm going to see if I can fit in three times during the talk because I have kind of three different subjects that I wrap up where I look around the room and smile, kind of inviting people if they have questions to ask them. If they don't, I'll just keep going. That smile itself, smiling between different concepts at your audience while you're not necessarily speaking. Smiling when you're speaking is also good, but taking a moment when you are breathing, or just before you drink that water, or when you're making eye contact, to smile at your audience helps them feel that you are comfortable with the moment. You're comfortable with the pausing, and it mentally gives them that that feeling of, oh, I am welcome to ask a question if I want. It can be really, really good. I definitely still sometimes (laughs) put a sticky note on my little monitor, and maybe it just has a drawing of a smiley face on it. I saw this tip years ago in a couple different places online when I was looking at, you know, just tips for making, you know, presenting on video. Lots of folks out there say, oh, you know, people like to watch videos of people who are smiling. When you see a smiling face, it naturally helps you feel happier. It's just a human thing. So you as the presenter, If you put a little sticky note with a smiley face, you know, it just can be a crude drawing. It will help you smile at the camera or at your audience. You don't even have to just write the word smile, right? So any crude smiley face can do. Perhaps one of the hardest things of all when it comes to pacing, though, is the end of the talk if you are running behind. I personally like to write down when my finish time is supposed to be on a piece of paper and leave it on the desk. I don't, I don't tend to do it as a sticky note. I just tend to throw it on the desk or a table if I have one, because I don't always remember (laughs) what time is this thing supposed to end. And as I'm going through my presentation and I'm either occasionally catching sight of a clock on the wall or seeing, you know, on my PowerPoint screen, seeing what time it is, and I know I'm approaching that finish, the natural tendency if you're behind can be to speed up, talk faster, keep going. Oh, I've got to get there. I've got to go. And that's the hardest time to pace. That's also the time though, like if you start speeding up near the end of your talk, makes your audience feel even more nervous because they probably know what time it is too. Maybe they have somewhere to go next. If you speed up at the same time they're already starting to kind of look at their watches, it just increases this feeling of tension for them and it's harder for them to listen to you. So at the end of your talk, it's more important than ever to think about, I want to land this gently. When I picture, okay, how, how does a talk go? Sometimes at the end, you feel like you're at the end of a race, but that's really not the feeling you want. At the end of the talk, it's like you've got a seaplane and you just want to make a nice, gentle landing on the water. Maybe that means you end up skipping some slides. 
you can practice with a projector, there are some ways that you can skip slides that are more graceful than others. You can arrow through them quickly, but that kind of gives that audience the sense that they're missing something. The statement, you're going too fast, is, is in another way a sense of saying, we feel like we're missing something, right? And just speeding through slides can do that. So depending on your presentation tool or whether or not you're using slides or notes, practice. Okay, if I'm nearing the end and I need to skip ahead, with my setup, what is the most graceful way I can do that? And if you practice it a few times, you'll feel much more comfortable when you're coming into the end because you know you got a plan B. Okay, I can, you know, hit this button and then that button and I'm right close to the end and I can land it gracefully for the audience. It really is a matter of just experience and practice. So get the sticky notes. Think first about breathing, controlling your breathing. If you're doing longer talks, consider working in pauses to drink water. Possibly get some tea to help keep your throat warm there. Think also about if people don't speak your language as their primary language, what will help them get into the talk and understand it? And for people who it is their primary language, what, what moments will help them put all those thoughts together in their head. Challenge yourself for however many times as often during your length of presentation to look around the room, make eye contact with different people while you, you pause, and also to smile at them as you make eye contact, not necessarily gluing onto their eyes for too long. Keep things moving and being friendly and open while you do a purposeful pause that invites questions and invites them in. And actually that silence can make it much more compelling to keep listening to you. By giving people moment and giving people a little room, we can actually help draw them into the talk and help keep them invested with us as we go on that journey toward our goal at the end, which is always a gentle, soft, comfortable landing where people feel like, oh yeah, we got, we really got into stuff. I liked the time that we took to go over these things. So those are my tips from a person who, when I get excited, I am still a bit of a motor mouth, but I have made so much progress and I know that you can too. Thanks for joining me for Dear Sequel DBA. I'm Kendra Little from sequelworkbooks.com. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the United States who is celebrating and to everyone else who's celebrating too. I'll talk to you soon.